Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Can I call Mr. Fletcher, please? Yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. Fletcher. Good it's, afternoon. It's the usher here. Um, can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay. I'm going to take you through the oath, so can you repeat after me, please? Um, can you hold the Bible in your right hand? And repeat after me. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you give your full name, please? Kevin Joseph Fletcher. Thank you for attending remotely today, Mr. Fletcher. Um, do you have in front of you a witness statement? Yes, I do. Um, can I ask you to look at that witness statement? Is it dated the 16th of November 2022? Yes. Can I ask you to look at the final page? That's page 17 of 17. Yeah. Um, is that your, your signature? Yes, it is. Uh, and can you confirm that the statement is true to the best of your knowledge and belief? I can. Thank you very much. That statement is now in evidence and will be uploaded onto the inquiry's website. Um, for the record, it is WITN 06000100. Uh, the questions I'm going to ask you today will be supplementary to the evidence that's in that statement. I'm going to begin by um, asking you about, a little bit about your background. Um, you were employed by Her Majesty's Forces for just over 20 years, between 1972 and 1994, is that right? That's correct, yeah. Uh, did, did your role in the armed forces include training to some extent? Yes, it, um, it was quite early on that you train on courses as you're going through and then actually then start to train the courses. I had quite an interest in training, so um, at a fairly early age I got involved in, uh, in training other soldiers in different things, uh, which culminated in a tour with our junior leaders regiment um, at Cologne, and I did two and a half years of training um, junior soldiers on all aspects of military and, um, and tactical weapons um, courses, basically. Thank you. And in 1994, after leaving the armed forces, you joined Peritas. Yes. Um, was it Peritas or Knowledge Pool at that stage? It was Peritas at that stage, um, and they advertised, as I was finishing the forces, they advertised for... Um, people who are trained on IT systems. Um, I had done quite a little, you know, quite a lot on IT systems, both at juniors and other roles that I had within the forces. They didn't say what the job was. Um, they just said that it was a new system to be launched, and um, and people could come along for an interview, and if successful, then attend a uh, a course that would then, uh, if they were successful, that would be offered the job. On arriving there, I found out it was for the uh, implementation of the national lottery system. Uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, get the, the job after the training, and very shortly after that, um, they asked um, if I would then train other trainers. So you, your first role was working on the National Lottery for Peritas? Yes, it was. Yes. And, and can you tell us the link between Peritas and Knowledge Pool and ICL? Were Peritas and Knowledge Pool the same thing, but with different names? Yeah, I mean, uh, Knowledge Pool is an autonomous company within the group. Um, and it changed, just changed the name really from Peritas to Knowledge Pool. Um, but the, the, as far as I'm aware, the position of the, the company stayed the same as that autonomous company within the group, which meant they could actually uh, bid for um, other business outside ICL, um, but were also usually the first choice of training um, for ICL projects, particular IT, IT rollout projects. Mm. And it was a subsidiary or, or linked to ICL, was it? It was linked to ICL, yeah, but it was, as I say, it was an auto, what they called an autonomous company within the group, as far as I know. Thank you. Um, in September 1998, you were given your first full-time contract. I, I think you began your initial role uh, uh, not on contract. Is that correct? Or not as a full-time employee, at least? Yeah, that was the, the original role was as a contractor, um, and... It was some time after that that um, we were in Liverpool and Stuart Kearns, who was the director at the time, called me and then offered me a full-time role uh, within, uh, within the company. Can you describe very briefly the positions that you held between 1998 and 2002? Uh, very briefly, I was a contract trainer to begin with. 
uh, and then I went in to be a uh, trainer um, on the lottery system. Uh, it wasn't very long that I had been trained that they then, they then promoted me to a, a regional manager of training. Um, and then I was, uh, after that had finished, the company then went right down then to just a few people. Um, and all of a sudden they won the, um, the post office project. And, uh, and of course it started to gear up again. That's when I was offered full time work. And from there I was, I was a training manager and then went to, uh, on a region. Uh, I trained the other trainers and, and to end up, I ended up as director of, um, of, of what was a knowledge pool. And then in 2002, you left and you moved to Manchester City Council, uh, retiring yes. in 2012, is that right? Yeah, that's true. Thank you. I'm going to ask you about the training that was provided. Uh, we'll come on in due course to look at various documents that describe them in detail, but by way of an introduction, uh, can you briefly explain what the user awareness event was uh, and what user training was and how they differed from each other? Well, the user awareness event, sorry, the user awareness events, as far as I recall, were to actually give an idea to a larger number of po uh, postmasters uh, when their region, what was likely to happen in their region and when they were likely to come online and what coming online entailed. Um, the user training was actually a number of courses that were given to both counter, uh, counter staff and also to sub-postmasters um, and managers to actually operate the system um, within their own premises. And who was it that would provide that training? It would be knowledge people who provided the training. Can I just add, though, to that bit that uh, subsequent to the training, there was also a number of other um, elements of the training, such as uh, an assistance within that training. So it wasn't just the courses, it was the documentation, the help desk. There was a number of other parts of the, the training and uh, of the support for the training. So you had a, a lecture-based user awareness course, you had a classroom-based training, and then you had various documents also, such as workbooks, to assist with the training. Is that a, a fair summary? That's correct. Uh, and included in that was also a, um, uh, was a training mode within the actual system itself. So in other words, they could switch from a live system into a training mode system. So there was a button on the Horizon system that you could press uh, that would yes. assist you with training? Yes. Thank you. Um, I want to turn to your statement. I'm just going to take you through a, a few passages within your statement. Um, could I ask for it to be brought up on screen? It's WITN 0630100. WITN 0630100. Thank you. Can we look at paragraph 10, which is on page 6? Thank you. If we could scroll down that page to the second half of the page. Um, this is a section where you talk about classroom training. And you say that classroom training, um, it's an F. Um, I have no knowledge of why the training medium of classroom-based training was chosen for the user training course, as I was not involved in the decision process. I do, however, consider this to be most appropriate training medium in this case because it was presented to POCL, that's Post Office, uh, Counters Limited, uh, and they signed it off as fit for purpose. I'm going to take you through a, a few similar um, paragraphs in the statement. Can we look at paragraph 16 and page 8, please? And it's the final line in paragraph 16. Uh, this relates to issues identified during the pilot or post-pilot events. And you say, I do believe that any issues identified during uh, or post-pilot events would have been rectified in the program, which was finally signed off by Pockel as, fitness, uh, as fit for purpose. Um, you'll, you'll get an idea of why I'm asking this question shortly, because it, it, it's the phrase fit for purpose it is regularly used. Let's, let's look at paragraph 17 um, on page 9. This is about the feedback form. Uh, you refer to the feedback form, and you say, um, 
it's about halfway down that page. I, uh, at the time, I did consider it appropriate to have different columns on the feedback form, as no questions were raised about the form by Pockle, and it was approved for use as was. Um, can we look at paragraph 29, page 11? This is about the user awareness event. And you say there, the training uh, did not differ at all from the design training program. Once the training program was signed off by Pockle as fit for purpose, it was delivered as is. Can we look at page 15, paragraph 42? This is in reference to the course appraisal forms. And you say halfway through that paragraph, uh, at the time I did consider the course appraisal form to be appropriate, and this was based on the Pockle approval of the form and sign off by Pockle as fit for purpose. Um, I'm nearing the end of the statement. Let's look at paragraph 50, page 17. It's the top of that page. It says the full programme was delivered as approved and signed off by Pockle and within the allotted time scale. And then finally, I'm going to read the top of paragraph 52 on that same page. If we could scroll down, thank you. It says, in my view, the training program fully enabled trainees to balance. If this had not been the case, then Pockle would not have approved and signed off the program as fit for purpose. Um, it's fair to say that you rely quite heavily on your witness statement, in your witness statement, on the fact that the post office signed off various aspects of the training program. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. Um, they were very insistent. It could be after several reworks. So we may have submitted um, a solution or a process uh, which, which balanced the, um, uh, the manual system against the uh, electronic system. Um, and then that would go forward in, in various stages to PLCL and they would then require reworks and then those reworks would go back and sometimes two or three times before they actually deemed it fit for purpose. So the post office was heavily involved in developing the training program, is that Ab right? Absolutely. And you say fit for purpose, I mean they didn't sign a piece of paper that said this is fit for purpose, it is, is that your way of describing their agreeing to proceed? Yes, I mean, once if there were no more um, if there were no more changes to it, um, and they they agreed that it was fit for purpose. In other words, it, it fulfilled the task that it was meant to do for that specific part of uh, of the processes, uh, whether it be EPOS or, or balancing, etc. And was your measure of success whether or not <coughs> the post office refused or agreed to proceed with something, rather than some sort of internal quality control? We had our own internal quality control, and sometimes there was, um, it, it was a case of we, we actually went to different post offices that some of us did that were involved in the creation of the, of the uh, documentation and actually watched people doing in, in a live environment the actual processes. And from those processes, of course, we linked that with what the post office has given us about certain things that you have to do on the system, certain actions on the system. Mm -hmm. We then wrote up that particular action and then, as I say, it went to the post office for sign-off. Uh, if it was, yeah, and as I say, it could come back two or three times before it actually, or several times before it was actually approved. But once it was approved, then that was the process we needed to follow. And generally speaking, who was that contact within the post office who would sign things off? The one I remember mostly was a, a lady called Sue Smith. Um, and she was to do with the training for POCR. Part of the, I think she was part of the procurement team, but I'm not 100% on that. Did you have any involvement with a, any senior management within the post office? Um, again, they came to one or two of the demonstrations um, that, that, that we actually gave. Um, we actually had one session, I do remember, in, um, in Stockport where some of the union uh, representatives uh, came uh, to look at to look at the system, um, and several managers. I can't remember all the managers, but it was it was widely demonstrated. Or sections of it were demonstrated to fairly you know, very senior members within uh, PLCL. Thank you. You've said unions. Is that the National Federation of Sub Postmasters? Is it the Communication yes, it Workers I, Union? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the National Federation of Sub Postmasters. Thank you. 
I want to look at the objective of the training program. Can we look at FUJ 401276, please? Thank you. This is a very early document. This is dated 1997. Um, there is a later version that we have. I'm not going to bring it up, but just for the purpose of the transcript, that's FUJ 401322 uh, from July 1999. But it, it is the same in so far as the section that I want to take you to, which is on page five of this document. Um, this sets out the objectives of the training program. Perhaps we could highlight that um, 2.2 blow that up slightly if possible. Thank you. Um, I'll read that to you. It says, ICL Pathway have contracted Peritas Limited to provide the training program in support of the BA slash POCL counter automation project. The training program is required by ICL Pathway to meet the following objectives. Uh, the first, compatibility. The program must be managed and delivered in a manner consistent with the implementation program undertaken by ICL Pathway Limited and their other subcontractors. Uh, timeliness, no individual is to be trained more than five working days prior to the automation of their normal counter position. Um, and then the required scope, which is to ensure that all staff who work within a post office are competent in the use of the automated platform, are aware of the impact on operational procedures caused by the introduction of the platform, and that specialist staff are provided with the appropriate additional information to perform their job role within an automated post office. And then it gives appropriate competence levels. It says the delivered program is required to ensure that 95% of personnel have a minimum competence that they're capable of processing 90% of all transactions undertaken by their base office correctly. Um, were those objectives that you were aware of? Um, maybe not in exactly the same words, but certainly that was, uh, that was an aim of the courseware and the training program. Um, we will look at m in more detail at the training, uh, but do you think that those objectives were achieved? I believe they were achieved, although it's very over the amount of people that were trained, it's very difficult to put an actual percentage of it. Um, as I said in my in my own witness statement, there was a, a, a wide range of both age groups and IT competency in uh, in the post office itself, and people who worked in the post office. Um, I don't know if it was ever measured to the fact that it was those ninety percent of all transactions and ninety percent ninety five percent of personnel of a minimum competence. Um, they certainly uh, undertook the course, as is, and, and yes, but putting a percentage on it, I, I couldn't do that. Can we look at FUJ 401280, please? This is a, a document that you wrote. Um, it is the Training and User Awareness Style Guide. I'll just wait a moment for that to be brought onto screen. I'm not going to take you to detail of this because I, I don't think it takes us anywhere. But in terms of um, the document itself, if we scroll down, we can see that you're the author of this document. This was a, It's a style guide um, that sets out essentially how training materials should uh, appear. Is that a fair summary? Yes, from what I remember of it, it as I say, it's 23 years ago, so I remember exactly what's in it. And it's, uh was difficult, but yes, for the main part, it was what 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 would appear and how it should appear, and the style guide again was um, it had to meet both um, uh, knowledge pool and um, and POCL standards. In other words, fitting with what, what they normally would produce. Can we perhaps just quickly scroll through that document just so we get a flavour of what it contains? If we look at page, say, 18 or 19, for example, it, it gives examples of workbooks and what they might look like, that kind of thing. W was this the kind of thing that you produced? Yes, it was. Uh, and what other documents of this kind do you recall producing? Um, well, actually, this was a style guide for, for most of the things. You know, there was the actual workbook. There were the quick reference guides, um, etc. 
um, that were that were produced to support the training. Did you produce the workbooks themselves? Most of them, yes. So we'll, we'll come to look Most at them, but them. some of them have, I think, your name as an example. Um, I think is it a, an example username in workbook nine. We can we can look at that in due course if we need to. Um, but the substance of those workbooks then that were produced for the training, that was something that um, you produced. Yes. I, I want to talk about the early training sessions, um, starting with what was called the first 14, and that was February, March 1999. I'll, I'll bring the document up, but can you tell us the background to the first 14? These were uh, a number of, if you like, trail courses where um, it was to give the trainers and delegates uh, without overlooking. In other words, there weren't a great lot of the senior management at each, or wasn't supposed to be a great deal of senior management at the first 14 courses. One, they were to give the, the trainers a, um, a chance in a live, not a live environment, but an environment with the real postmasters. And in order to give the postmasters a real chance on the system without being overlooked by some of the very senior management. And to try and get as honest feedback as we could on the actual um, the course itself and how they felt about it and how the trainers managed over um, over the uh, uh, over the period of the course. Can we bring up on screen poll three zeros three nine seven three three? And perhaps we could, if we could scroll over to the next page. Um, so this is a report, I think, that you wrote. If we look at the page after that, it has you down as the author. Yeah. Do you remember writing this report? No, not 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 outstanding to all the reports that I wrote, but that, I, I, have a, I have a recollection of it, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly what was in it, no. Was it the first significant report that you wrote in, in respect of um, the effectiveness or otherwise of the training? For the horizon uh, system yes I would say so particularly with um, with post office staff and it's dated the 28th of March 1999 yeah. can we look at page five please and I'll, I'll read to you section one which gives the introduction it says ICL training services were requested by pathway slash pockle to provide trainers for a series of courses for counter assistants and counter managers on the Horizon system. Uh, so pausing there, that there are separate training courses for counter assistants and for counter managers. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, the delegates on the courses were volunteers from Pockle. Um, they were volunteers. W were they sub postmasters, assistants, or, or something else? They were both, I believe. There was uh, postmasters and uh, and assistants. Do you know how they were selected? Um, no, that would have been post office who would have gave us the name there. We would have had nothing to do with the actual selection of the delegates attending. The aims of these practice courses from an ICL training service perspective were as follows. One, to give experience to new trainers who had completed the ICL training services induction course in November, December 1998, and a recent Horizon update weekend in delivering the counter assistant and counter managers events. Um, who were those trainers, the, the new trainers? Um, who were they? Were they people who were employed by Peritas? Were they self-employed? Were they contractors? Do you know their backgrounds? They were mostly contractors, but they'd worked on other projects for um, for Peritas and for Knowledge Pro. Not all of them, but some of them. Do you have an idea of how many trainers there were at all? It was certainly, at, uh, at its peak, there were certainly in the region of 250. Thank you. Um, number two, to receive feedback from the delegates on the course content. Three, to evaluate the performance standard assessment results. Four, to evaluate the equipment reliability when used in a training environment. Uh, Pathway slash Pockle had agreed to use the courses as an opportunity for new trainers to train in a real environment. Um, now, real environment, what, what do you understand by that? Well, a real environment, for us, it wasn't a live environment. There's a definite distinction between the two. The systems were standalone, and therefore you couldn't actually link into any sort of network. Uh, a real environment for us would have been going to a room, whether it be in a hotel or wherever it was chosen for, for the actual training. And there were several several different types of room that we did manage to get. 
and uh, and setting up the equipment, getting it all ready to go, laying everything out, um, and making sure that as you know as near as we could to actually make it uh, as though they'd been out on the road. They'd set up a classroom, everything else, and the, the postmasters and county assistants came to attend the course. Thank you. So it wasn't in a post office and it wasn't dealing with real customers, but it no. was trying to replicate that environment in, in a classroom. Correct. Um, in terms of how the training went forward from, say, 99, 2000 and onwards, um, was that still the format in terms of it not being within a post office or uh, on live equipment? Uh, yeah, that was a, that, that's all we could do. We had to have everything we did in that because the amount of trainers involved, the amount of training locations, the width and breadth of, uh, of the country, we had to actually have a generic approach to the training. So once we actually got it, so, you know, as per the course specifications, then it was delivered as that each time. But it was, as far as I know, it was never delivered on the live system. And this training in February and March 1999, that was very early on. It was almost 12 months before the national rollout uh, began properly. Um, were you aware at this time that work was still uh, ongoing in relation to the Horizon platform? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I used to pay regular visits to Felton. Um, where they de were developing, um, you know, developing new things and actually improving some aspects of the system. Um, so it was um, we could test the course by that, but you know, obviously it was ongoing, as you say, a year before, um, before the actual final system would have been signed off. So, as a company that was linked to ICL, did you have free access to to ICL? I mean, you've said that you, you visited. Could you go when you wanted to speak who, who you, to who you want to? Yeah, I mean, it, it, usually if we had, um, if there was some issue that we, we, I would go down, or certainly one of the, the, the senior training team would have gone down and actually looked and, and tried to find out what, how it was developing and what version we were up to, because of course everything was version control down at Felton, and just to see if it was, um, how, how far off it was, so that if we did have a question from post office about why that wasn't actually there yet or being used, in those early stages, we could say, well, this is the stage it was at the development of Felton. Can we look at page six, please, in the bottom of page six? Um, this looks at the, the feedback, and it has totals there um, of the feedback in the very final column um, at the bottom. I've added those up, so it's 9 plus 66 plus 179 plus 137. Um, that it makes a total of 391. So does that, that sound about right? There were 391 attendees um, at this first 14. Yes, it will be about. Session. Um, I'm going to take you through some of the feedback. Um, can we start on page seven, please? Thanks. So if we look at page seven, it starts with the Bristol counter managers uh, training. And we, if we look at the remarks below, um, so some of the remarks, I'm going to give you just some examples of the remarks. So I won't take you to, to every one. And I, I should say that there are some positive comments uh, within this document, but I'm not necessarily going to focus on those. I, I'd like to talk to you about, for example, um, number one, more time required, several comments. Uh, a bit further down, too much information compressed into course. A little further down, although trainer was excellent, not enough time to cover all topics plus questions. Um, good trainer, not enough time allowed. Um, the next one is the Bristol counter assistance. And if we go over the page. Thank you. It says there a lot of information to take in on one day, uh, no doubt practice is the best way to learn. Um, scrolling down Bristol counter managers, and we have quite a few comments there. Uh, not confident, not computer literate. I'll need more, um, I'll need extra training. More time on balancing error notices. Looking down a little bit more, it says second day should be expanded to full day, especially for delegates who have no experience of automated systems. I think we we said earlier it's one it was one and a half days for managers, wasn't it? Yes, it was. If we look at that final paragraph on that page, it says course definitely requires two full days. Second day is six hours with no lunch break. 
I feel the course is unsatisfactory because it's very intensive and coverage of important tasks, i.e. balancing, is rushed as a result. Uh, bearing in mind sub-postmaster could be asked to do their first balance unsupervised. Scrolling over to the next page, 25th of February, Bristol counter assistance. Um, about halfway down on those comments, it says, not yet totally confident, one day is not enough. Uh, so the counter assistance course was that one day? Yeah. Um, the final comment there, it says, it would be useful for staff to try more transactions, products not covered. Uh, moving on to the Glasgow counter assistance, 5th of March, if we could scroll down to the next page. More time needed on reports. Um, third comment says, not confident on end-of-day procedures. Practice will help. A little further down, it says, more time needed on training. Say, two persons say, have said that. Uh, not confident at all. If we look at the bottom there, it says, not very confident. Uh, do not have enough information to balance my position at the end of my shift. Too much information was crammed into too short a time. The course was too um, was too long time wise. Next is the Glasgow counter managers. If we could scroll down onto the next page, some of the feedback there is balance ran out of time, more time required, uh, more time daily summaries slash balance. Uh, we move on to the Newcastle counter managers. And if we look down at the second comment there, more on transactions and how to balance how to put things right, more time. Um, a bit further down, it says more on balancing outputs slash actual printouts. A little bit further down, it says balance slash cash account procedure in brackets, more time. On to the next page, please. Birmingham counter managers. Again, quite similar concerns being raised there. They say um, concerned I feel if you're not careful in the accounting aspects of Horizon, you might find yourself in trouble. You need to know what you're doing. Uh, more time needed on balancing procedure. Sped through a lot of information and the course quite intense. Balancing more time. Pretty confident with day-to-day -day work and procedures. Still confused over the balance in relation to comparing it with what I do at present. Um, a little further down, it says a little longer needed on balancing procedures. Near the end there it says balancing section is a lot to take in within the current format. Confident in day one content, less confident on the management slash balancing section. The balancing section I think was on, on the second day wasn't it? Yes. yes. Um, if we keep on scrolling, I think the next page is actually just a, it's a photocopy of the first page so we can go over the page again. Thank you. We are at Newcastle. If we keep on scrolling, perhaps um, through to Birmingham counter assistance and over the page, remarks general, I need at least two to three times more uh, of this training before I can feel confident. I need to be trained again for the course as I can't remember everything that was taught. In general, it felt a bit rushed. I did feel that the course uh, was a bit rushed. It may be better held over two days. Uh, another comment at near the bottom really needs two days. That's counter assistance. That's only the one day course, and they're saying there they need two days. Um, St Albans counter managers. If we have a little look below that table, second entry there. Balancing needs more time. About halfway down, having experience of echo and understanding balance periods and cap helped. Although I feel half a day for balancing could be insufficient for offices that do not have this experience. There are, there are more entries. I, I don't think I need to take you to them all. Um, there are undoubtedly some positive comments within this feedback. Um, but is it fair to say that there are two themes that really stick out there? Uh, one is of not enough time, and the second is insufficient information on balancing. Do you agree with that? I think the uh, whenever I've taught IT systems before, I mean, you're, you're, you're subject to certain restraints. I mean, if, you, if you'd have had it over a week, you probably would have got as many comments saying it's, you know, too much time, it went over and over again. Um, 
Uh, and again, it, it is a, a thread that runs through um, a lot of the comments there is the amount of time. Um, it, it's very difficult, really, because for some people, it, it wasn't enough time. For some people, with the, with the additional uh, support that they had in the form of the workbooks, the quick reference guides and the help desk, etc., cetera, and the, and the chance to actually go on to remedial training, then perhaps you should be looking at that, uh, at some of the feedback with relation to that as opposed to just looking at the feedback of those very early courses, um, you know, without actually factoring in the other, the other assistance that was available to, post, uh, to some postmasters and the staff. We'll look at the further assistance and we'll look at some feedback later on. Uh, but in so far as this early feedback is concerned, so March 1999, uh, is it a fair comment to say uh, that looking at those remarks, there are quite a few that... Uh, said there wasn't enough time and quite a few that said that there was insufficient information on balancing. I, I agree. Um, the other thing I would actually add into that mix, though, which I think is very relevant, is the fact that some of the postmasters and post office staff have been actually balancing in a certain way for many years. I took a great pride in it, to be fair to them, and, and I, I talked to a lot of postmasters at the time, and it, and it was a real pride thing to balance the, the, the books as, as they did it, as, they, as they'd always done it. So any change to that balancing process and anything that was taken away from them, they were going to be incredibly confident in what they did to something that was new um, and it didn't always sit very well. I'm not making that as an excuse, but it is a point of fact. Can we look at page 20 of this document? And that has the conclusion... Um, the conclusion says, I'm going to read it out for the record. It says, the trainer appraisals have been very favorable for a first attempt. Uh, there's still room for improvement, particularly in the area of timings, although the timings did improve uh, where a trainer delivered a subsequent event. It would appear from some of the delegate appraisals that they expect, expected balancing on the counter assistance course. Uh, the appraisals annotated unsatisfactory on overall level of satisfaction was because of the amount of information to be assimilated and the course content rather than any problem with the trainer's delivery. <coughs> uh, so the summary uh, conclusion there is that um, the issue was less with the way that the trainer was delivering the course uh, and more of an issue about the amount of information that uh, attendees needed to assimilate. And that, can I also add from personal experience there? Yeah. That if you are delivering a training course, particularly that length for the first time, it's a huge amount for the trainer to remember. Um, and it's not the easiest thing to do. So you usually find on the first few courses you do, you haven't got as much judgment of when to actually slow down a little bit or make sure that's been assimilated. That comes with maybe one or two courses and then you actually feel more confident with the materials. Um, so there's always a little bit of that as well. So um, wh why I accept that the, the more time is a definite thread running through it and the balancing also. I mean, there are some other contributory factors to why it might not have been as slick as it could have been in the first, in the first few events. Um, absolutely. But uh, let's go back to page 12 of this document. <coughs> it looks at a manager's course, the Birmingham manager's course in March. So this is... A fair way through this first 14, we're looking now at the 8th and 9th of March. Yeah. Can we just look at those, some of those comments again? Um, the first is, concerned, I feel, if you're not careful with accounting aspects of Horizon, you might find yourself in trouble. You need to know what you're doing. More time needed on the balancing process. Sped through a lot of information, and the course is quite intense. Balancing, more time. Pretty confident on the day-to-day -day working procedures. Still confused over the balance in relation to comparing um, it with what I do at present. So, I mean, there are, there are a fair few comments there, quite a few remarks that address concerns about balancing rather than simply uh, the amount of time that has been allocated in the course. Yeah, I accept that. And um, But you see there, I mean, that, that sort of where it says, uh, uh, so, yeah, Still confused over the balance in relation to comparing it with what I do at present. I mean, that, that just justifies what I've said there, that some of the postmasters for many, many years had taken a pride in balancing uh, as they did manually and, got, and it was perfect and they took a great pride in it. And to suddenly take that away and, and give them an electronic system to do it with, which was in, in a lot of respects very different, um, it, it, it was quite a, um, a culture shock to them on, on the actual balancing side. But I'm not... 
decrying the fact that yes, we uh, we would have liked more time. I would have thought, or they would have liked more time. Um, and the balancing, yeah, was um, was what it was, you know, on the system. But um, there were other support mechanisms available to them. If we pause in time there, then so February, March, nineteen ninety nine. Um, do you think that the training course was sufficient insofar as it addressed balancing? It addressed balancing within the time restraints that we had to do the course, and it, and it certainly went through the balancing process. Uh, but again, it, the the, um, the trainers and um, well, everybody really encouraged the uh, attendees to actually use the other um, things that were available to them to actually confirm the the knowledge that we picked up on the course. And certainly the help desk. I mean, from my own personal experience of working in the post office during the uh, during the actual uh, whole uh, event, um, and that was one in Slough that I worked in. If any, if they needed to resolve anything, the first thing that most postmasters did in a few offices that I went in, if something was wrong, not with the horizon system, but anything, they picked up the phone and phoned the help desk. And they didn't seem to. They very rarely seemed to use the uh, documentation, supporting documentation. The help desk was their key. They rang the help desk, the help desk solved the problem, and they got, they got on with them the day. The, the help desk assists once you're on the system, but presumably the training before you get on the system is pretty important, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But, um, but to, to get every single bit of what was a fairly complex and, and uh, course into that time, and you'd be perfect on it as you finish the courses, then I think that was... A tall order, to say the least, considering some of the delegates which were attending the course. And as I said, the age range was was you know fantastic, really, and uh, and the actual IT knowledge was excellent to none at all. You know, so it, it wasn't just about the um, the actual training itself. It was a sometimes it was the people who were actually attended, and no disrespect to them, but they they tried the best. But it's it's bound to be something new if you've never done it before. I would say it's more complex. Um, so let's say you're a manager and you have a day and a half allocated for training. Um, your evidence is that, that, that there was sufficient training insofar as balancing was concerned for a day and a half's course. Um, but do you think a day and a half was sufficient? Um, it, again, it depended. I, you know, I come back to it depending on the delegates. For some, obviously, it wasn't because that's the, that's the expression they did. And for, for many, it was. You know, so it was striking that balance between the two, um, and certainly the the courseware allowed you. Uh, sorry, the courseware and the delivery of the course showed you how to balance. For most people, from well, I can't put a percentage on it, but for a large number of people, that was enough, and for some people, it wasn't enough. But when you say you're a postmaster and you come on a course and balancing, what's your background to to actually doing that? You know, you'd have to look at how. You know, how 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 afraid with you were, were you with IT uh, with IT equipment and using IT equipment to uh, you know to do the sort of functions that were asked on the system? Um, did you take away from this exercise? I mean, looking at those kinds of comments that are on the screen now, did you take away to to any extent that more might needed to be done insofar as training for balancing was concerned? Yeah, absolutely. It was trying to make it so that the trainers were as clear as possible um, on on how to, you know, from the actual courseware to actually uh, to to make sure the balancing was right, particularly on the sub postmasters course. And uh, and it was a case of you went through it as slowly as you could with some of the people. And I know many of the trainers um, who didn't have to finish at that time stayed behind with some of the de delegates who were really, you know, who were struggling. Some of the older delegates who were struggling to actually just run through a bit of it again. I know that happened quite often. So yes, it would have been nicer to have more time for some delegates, but um, I think it was sufficient time for whatever the percentage was of delegates. But you always want more time on training courses. I mean, following this exercise, which the intention of this exercise was to get a snapshot in time in the early stages to, to try and improve the program going forward, um, what concrete steps did you take uh, to improve the training with regards to balancing? Well, we just we went through the balancing and tried to make make it as you can't say simple because obviously there was a, a system to be followed. Uh, sorry, there was a procedure to be followed on the system, but we, the trainers were very aware that this was a, a very important part of the of the course. In fact, or the whole course was important, but they tried to actually explain it um, 
as well as they could explain it and actually look out for people who are really struggling on the course, particularly with that element, to actually make sure they got some remedial training. So once you received the product of this study, how did you communicate that to the trainers? Um, well, I mean, it, depending if the trainers had actually been um, um, on the courses and, and had finished the courses, although there weren't many at that time we'd gone through, but it was it was part of then their induction. And when they were doing um, the three-week induction, we actually made sure that on the last week where they were delivering elements of the system, a lot of that was on the actual balancing. And, um, and we had, you know, we were trying to make them aware there that this had to be explained um, as well as they could, and also that, that they, um, if they saw somebody struggling, then they were to actually make note of that and, um, and you know, carry out remedial action where necessary, in other words, report it back. Or point the actual delegate into an area where they could get additional support on balancing. Can we go back to the first page of this, which is the, the facts header? Um, this is sent from Alan Bourne to Catherine Cook. Are you, are you able to assist us with who they are? I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't got a clue. No. I mean, do, I've not got a do you remember this report being escalated in any way um, within ICL pathway, no. even to the post office? I can't remember it being escalated. I do remember, actually, that the... Um, we were very aware of the timings on the course. I mean, that uh, all trainers were made aware that they had to, um, you know, th there were some things that were generic, which were fairly straightforward to do, uh, such as the EPOS, the electro electronic point of sale element was fairly generic. Uh, but actually the, the accounting, the, uh, the actual accounting bit and the balancing bit would be difficult for some delegates, as I say. And, um, uh, and we, we tried to rectify it from a trainer level as far as it being escalated to hierarchy in the post office. Certainly, Stuart Kearns, who was the director at the time, was very aware of it. Um, I'm going to take you to another document. It's NFSP 50340. Um, this is a document from one month later. If we look, in fact, on the first page it says 1996, but actually if we turn over the page... It's a 1999 document, um, and it's one that we looked at this morning. <clears throat> it's comments made by sub-postmasters to um, Pam Jarvis um, from, well, it, it sent, the, the cover letter is sent from Colin Baker. Um, and let's have a look at those. The, these are comments that were made to the NFSP. Training. The first day of training is okay, but the second day is bad because it's rushed. Uh, they're not finishing on time, uh, but are rushing to finish before 3.30 p.m. because otherwise they have to buy lunch. Uh, why do you use the most expensive hotels? Question mark. <coughs> a couple down, it says, um, in every training session, no one, nobody had done a main balance, snapshot balances only. Nobody had been trained to do a full balance. Uh, so this is one month after 30th of April, 1999. Um, were you aware of those kinds of comments, e even if not those particular comments? Certainly the first one. I don't understand that at all. Um, that they, I don't know of any trainers who did that and they would check regularly. Uh, why did they use the most expensive hotels? Uh, that, again, was down to a location bit, uh, you know, to, to a location thing, and to make, obviously, the delegates as comfortable as possible. Um, so, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't see that top one at all. I've never seen this document before, as far as I know. Um, and a lot of it, I, um, you know, certainly on the train in there, um, I don't recognise. But I mean, the first comment that it's rushed, uh, the third comment that nobody had done a main balance uh, and nobody had been trained to do a full balance, uh, th those themes were similar to the themes that were picked up in the, the February-March report, aren't they? Yeah, it would appear so. It's... Um it's, as I say, it's, uh, I don't, I don't actually, I can't relate to that. I can't, I can't remember the whole balance procedure. I mean, it's 23 years ago. As far as I know, I mean, as I say, the actual balancing process was signed off by post office and, and from their hierarchy. So I would imagine that it, um, you know, it was fit for purpose. Um, we carried out the the, um, the training as it as it should have been done according to the training documentation and the ones and, and what the post office required. Um, I don't, I don't recognise that number three at all. 
you don't recognize it in as much as you didn't receive it and didn't see it at the time, or you don't recognize it in that you didn't receive any complaints uh, about f training um, failing to, to, to assist sufficiently with balancing? No, I mean, the, there is always issues on training. There, there is issues with um, the courseware, and obviously uh, not so much the courseware, but actually what is taught on the course. Um, and you'll always get feedback that it's not long enough, it's too long, the room was too hot, it was too cold, tea wasn't on time. You know, you get lots and lots of feedback. Um, I do, uh, and I've already conceded that we would have liked more time on the second day, but that wasn't my decision. And, and it was a case of the two hierarchical elements of, of the actual uh, training rollout, which was um, Peritas and also POCL agreed that's what we had to do on that day. And the trainers and, and, um, and myself and other people involved at that level tried to do the best we could um, in, in relation to what we've been told to do. I appreciate it some years after now, but were there themes that um, you recall at the time, in the early days at least of training, so February, March, April, um, themes about there not being enough time, i.e. that first paragraph, it being a bit rushed, uh, and problems with the balancing, that third paragraph? Um, I certainly remember the not enough time, but it wasn't by everybody. I mean, some people would say, yeah, it was spot on, and some people would say there was not a, it wasn't enough time. Um, I do, I do recognise that, certainly, and I've already conceded that point. And we would have liked, certainly as a trainer and trainers, uh, part of the training team, we would have liked more time. But we were, we had to go with what we were given and what was agreed at a, a higher level than ours. So with the time we had, we tried to do the best we could. Do you think issues such as timing were raised within ICL? Um, I mean, you, you said you, you did what you did with the time available. Did, did you raise it at all with anybody? Yeah, I mean, but it's... It, you're always, it's always a concern about the time, but um, again, as I say, it, it was known within ICL, uh, and coming back again, repeating myself, is the fact that one of the fallbacks to that particular comment was that there was other help and support available. So when it was raised, even if they hadn't picked up 100% on the course itself, there was other, there was other supporting um, things that could be done to help them with balancing, such as the help desk, the workbook, etc., etc. So it, although it was a concern, it was felt that it would be addressed by additions to the actual training. Um, you said it was raised within ICL. With anyone in particular? Um, well, certainly Stuart Kearns, my boss, would have known about it, and he would have he would have been dealing at that level. Um, but uh, as far as me being a part of those meetings or um, have any say in that, apart from feeding it into Stuart Kearns, I wouldn't have been able to do anything else about it. Thank you. Can we look at poll 3028357? This is a document we looked at um, this morning. Can we look at page four, please? Th this may well not be something that you saw at the time. Um, this is relating to acceptance incident 218. Do you, do you remember any references to acceptance incidents and acceptance incident 218? No. no. Sorry. No, I have no recollection of that. This was a, a contractual incident that was raised by the post office. And if we can just have a, a look at what it says there. It says, the manager's training course is not acceptable due to deficiencies in the accounting modules. Uh, in the live environment, the training given did not equip the users to perform the completion of office cash accounts. This is a, I think it means basic, POCL function that is central to running and accounting for the POCL network. Um, that acceptance incident was observed, it says, on the 19th of May, 1999. Um, was anything along those lines ever raised with you at all? No, I mean, it, um, if anything, the time issue was raised more backwards. That When, when we looked at the appraisals that we got from uh, the postmasters and counter assistants that to attending the course, uh, there was quite, obviously, a lot, as you already pointed out, a, a lot of comments about the timings, you know, that there weren't enough time. That was passed up, but as far as this particular document and input into this document, then no, it, it was passed up through Stuart Kearns and the hierarchy of, um, of Peritas, and I believe then through ICL, though I wouldn't know, and certainly PLCL, um, attended nearly, well, all the development of the training course. 
if we think back to that time period, so we're talking May, summer of 1999, into the autumn, towards September and during September 1999, do, do you remember any concrete steps that were taken uh, to improve the training course, uh, particularly in respect of balancing issues? Um, not concrete steps, no. I mean, the, the, I don't believe the course was changed. The course couldn't really be changed because there was an there was an actual process to balance it. So you can't. It's very difficult then to you can't change that process because that's the process needed to balance. So as far as concrete changes to the system or the way the process was delivered, I, I don't remember and don't recall any what you would call concrete changes. There was issues about it, and and obviously these were passed up to the hierarchy. Um, in in my particular case, anyway, but it. Uh, we had to follow. We have to follow that process, and I don't remember. I don't remember the system changing. I don't remember any of the training changing to um, to address those issues. In fact, it wasn't actually in my mind the process. It was the timing of the process that may have been an well was an issue, obviously. Can we look at FUJ four zeros one three five six, please? This is the counter manager's course specification. It's dated October 1999. Um, you're listed as being on the, the distribution list. Is, is this something you remember at all? Not word for word, but do you remember it as a, as a document? Mm, not, not particularly, not as a document, no. Um, could we uh, turn am, to... I on the, am I on the distribution part? I can't see Yes, it. if we look down, sorry. Your name's listed in, in those final... You, so you're saying yeah, I'm, if I was on the distribution, I certainly would have seen it. Um, the actual document, I don't particularly remember, but um, but yeah, maybe, maybe so. Um, can we look over the page, please? Um, so this is the specification for the counter managers course, and it seems as though in October of 1999 there were amendments made uh, following the evaluation exercise. So that's I think. It, um, that there was an exercise in July 1999. Um, and then it says, document is based on the courses presented as dry runs to Post Office Counters Limited and signed off by Trevor Rollison in September 1999. Um, if we look at page three, this is the contents of the course. It still seems to be a two-day course or a one-and-a-half-day course that's spread over two days. Um, is that right in terms of the time period? It, that, that didn't change. No. It is right, sorry. No, it didn't yeah. change. If we scroll over to page five, um, on page four we're looking at, at the day one training course. And we're now on, on page five, which is still the day one. And there is quite a lot of content dealing with the EPOS systems, so EPOS intro, EPOS continued, EPOS scales. Uh, and then scrolling down, it says EPOS rems and reversals. Um, were you aware during this period, so October 1999, of any issues with the EPOS system, any technical issues with the EPOS system? Um. No, I, 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 I can't actually say I was. I mean, it, um, I, think, I think it was all okay. I mean, as I said to you, almost all the way through the initial part of the project, they were working on different parts of the EPOS system. Um, and it, it's, it was a fairly generic, the EPOS sales on the system, as I remember, were very generic. Uh, I don't remember a lot, if any, of the... Um, uh, any of the changes on, on, on what you've shown me there on EPOS? Um, I mean, through your conversations with people at ICL, you're, you're, you've already said how, how you're able to visit their premises and, and talk to people, talk to developers. I mean, did you talk to developers at all during your period of training? Yes, I did. Um, one of the ones that I, I wanted to learn was uh, barcodes on benefit books. So I worked quite closely with uh, a guy who was actually developing that at Felton. And uh, he showed me how all that works. And that way then I could answer more in-depth questions if any of the trainers we were training had issues about the barcoding, et cetera, on the benefit books. 
Um, so it was things like that I went down so I could get a more in-depth knowledge on some things um, that I could then explain to the trainers as they were going either done the training or I were going through the training. And in any of those conversations that you had, did, did anybody point out any issues they were having with the EPOS software or uh, any other bugs, errors or defects at that time? Well, it, it's very difficult really because they, you actually get the, um, it depends on which version. And there's a, the, the version control at Felton was incredibly tight. I mean, there was a, a lady who ran the, um, who, who ran the version control. Um, and she was well renowned for being very tight on which version. So in other words, as they added a particular function, it could affect another function. So it was because obviously they were interlinked. So you could revert back to the previous version um, and then develop, you know, and it kept going like that. So sometimes a new thing that was added affected the, some other parts of the system, but they wouldn't actually release that then. It would actually go back to the drawing board and, and, and until it didn't affect the version. And then as the next version was cleared, it would then become, say, version one, uh, and then it would be version two and version three. So it was always stable in the last version, if that makes sense. But as somebody who was designing the, the courses and, and the materials, uh, we have a day here, almost a day dedicated to the EPOS system. Um, did anybody point out to you that there were problems being experienced in the EPOS system at that time? Not really, not on the training systems, no. Um, I mean, it, um, it, it seemed fine. I mean, most of the EPOS was, it was fairly straightforward. Um, some people, some of the delegates had never seen touchscreen technology before and things like that. And that was something that, again, we had to go through um, uh, with, with some of the delegates. But, uh, but as far as the actual sales, et cetera, on the EPOS, they, they seem to work fine. I don't remember there being a problem with those, apart from the fact, you know, it depends what version you were looking at. I mean, it was a case of, as a version became released, then it was fine. It had been tested and it was great. It was only the version on from that which might have affected the previous version. Um, and, and that wasn't released then until it was made right. But you weren't working on a live system. Um, no. So did anybody say, hang on a minute, um, although you're working in this environment, when the postmasters get out to the real world, their system might operate slightly different? No, I mean, it's, um, there's no reason why it should. I mean, it's, that's a bit like saying when you put Windows on a computer, if you, if you try it stand alone, it's fine. But if you put it on the network, it won't work. I mean, it, it, it should have worked. I mean, it, it, I, I have no reason to believe it didn't work. I don't remember anybody telling me the EPOS didn't work and, and didn't work well. Um, you've said at the beginning of your evidence today about uh, how much you relied on the post office signing off the various training um, materials. What did you see as the role of ICL in relation to identifying technical issues with Horizon and informing you about those? Well, it, as I say, it was a case of um, coming back to Stuart again. As a director of the of the uh, company, he actually went down um, several times and and talked to uh, high level meetings about any issues that they had. Um, but um, but we were informed if anything was was uh, was affecting the training or may affect the training through Stuart at the meetings and as I said because I sometimes uh, and others too wanted more in-depth knowledge about a certain process on the system um, that would allow us to maybe train it better we would actually go down to Felton and speak to the guys who were developing it and women obviously. And in all of your conversations with people in Felton did, did nobody mention any concerns they had with the Horizon system? Oh thousands. Uh, but, you know, that's part of development. They were developing a system. So, you know, there was always some concerns. You know, it, it be, you don't develop a system like Horizon and not have some concerns. It, um, it's just the way it is. But the, those concerns would all have to be sorted before, before that, the next version or the, it, the, the stable version was released. So, yes, of course, there were, there were lots of concerns by various people that, about various parts of the system until they were rectified and were included in the next version for release. Can we look at FUJ 401357, please? This is a document that's the training and user awareness baseline document. Um, now, you're not listed on the distribution list uh, of this. 
But is this a document that you're, you recall or you would have seen at the time? Again, it, it, it's very difficult to recognise individual documents, even ones I've wrote myself after 23 years. But if it was to do, if I could have got my hands on it and it was to do with anything training, I would have read it. Well, let's go through it and, and see where we get to. The, the date for this is the 29th of November 1999. So it's eight months after the first 14 training that we talked about earlier this afternoon. So we're eight months down the line now, and this is the um, what's called the baseline document. Um, can we look at page nine, please? And there's a diagram on page nine. I wonder if we can just blow up the diagram, please. This shows the training solution. Um, are you able to tell us what this shows at all? I mean, if we start with, for example, user awareness, is that that the user awareness course was the first interaction somebody would have with training, um, that lasting two and a half hours? Yes. And then you have a specific course depending on who you are. So you have a counter course, which is a day, a manager course, if you're a manager, two and a half days. And then you have specialist training, for example, for auditors, uh, for trainers, um, and for HFSOs, are those field support officers? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and their training would be longer. That would be two to five days. Is that right? Is that how you remember it? Yes, it is. I don't remember the specifics of that course. I and mean, well, we certainly did one for the auditors because I actually went down and uh, attended one, at least one of those course with the auditors to actually make sure it was, uh, you know, we were training it right and they were getting all the information they needed because obviously to be able to audit, they needed to be, you know, really hot on the system basically. Um, so here, here we are in November of 1999, so eight months after that first uh, report that you wrote um, and the length of the courses are, are still the same, aren't they? The counter yeah. course, one day, manager course, one and a half day. So nothing has changed as far as that's concerned. Is that right? That's true. Uh, can we look at page 16, please? Halfway down, it, thank you, that, that um, five, it describes the user awareness course just so that we can learn a little bit more about what these different courses are, I'll just read that second paragraph. It says, the user awareness event is aimed at all users working within or providing support to post offices. The purpose of the event is to provide an understanding of the impact um, the impending installation and automation program will have on them as individuals and their outlet as a whole. The overall aim is to elevate concern users may have of the Horizon system and encourage participation during training and installation. Um, was the, the user awareness course, I think it was a voluntary course, is that correct? Yeah, yes it was. They were obviously encouraged by a post office to attend. As far as I can relate, it was voluntary, but we're, they were usually the ones that I actually saw um, were always very well attended because obviously it was, um, was going to have a, a big impact on the business they were in. And is, was that essentially an introduction, a, a brief introduction into the system? Yeah, it was a brief introduction about what the system did. It was, it was where they fitted in in the rollout process. Uh, and basically what it says in that paragraph. And, um, and, and they could ask some questions on at the end, etc. Uh, and if not, we took them away and then fed them back to, um, to post office and to, uh, to uh, Peritas to actually get in touch and answer the questions. But... Mostly, it was fairly straightforward. The UAE was a, a fairly straightforward event. Thank you. Can we look at page 18, please? Um, if we scroll down just a little bit, it has their managers, and this describes the manager's course. So that's a one-and-a-half-day <coughs> contiguous training event um, delivered over two days to include venue setup and clear down. Um, this course will be targeted at staff who are required to understand the full functionality of the automated platform. It's understood that all management grades will need this training. Uh, it is also understood that other staff may perform these tasks in some cases as backup, and they will also need the manager's training event. So the manager's training, the one and a half day event, uh, that was for, for example, sub postmasters uh, and also for assistants who would sometimes carry out those sub postmaster tasks. Yes. 
And then you had a separate one-day course we see there for the counter staff. It's recognized that some of these staff who perform some management functions would attend, as I said, the manager's course. And scrolling down, you then have those other courses that were a little longer. You have the back office audit, uh, the POC will train the trainer. So the train the trainer is a five-day course um, for, I think, it's fair to say, uh, training those who trained. Yes. Can we look at page 31, please? Um, and scrolling down this again, this goes into a little bit more detail about the manager's one and a half day course. Uh, and it mentions balancing there. It says um, it's the fourth bullet down. This course will be targeted at staff who are required to understand the full functionality of the automated platform, including balancing <coughs> activities. And then scrolling down, you have a section on counter assistance. Can we go to page 36, please? This talks uh, about the actual format of the, the courses. So all courses will start at or before 10 a.m. There'll be a maximum of six staff on each event. <coughs> and, the, and then the final bullet there says, the training audience will be a maximum of 72,000 post office staff, sub postmasters, and assistants, as defined in figure 8.1 overleaf. And if we scroll down, it has there the numbers. Um, do, do you remember? those kinds of figures. So managers' yeah. events, you were expecting. Uh, 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 sorry. Sorry. I, I <laughs> believe it was the biggest IT training event ever undertaken in the United Kingdom. Um, and I think we ran more events on one day than any other uh, training event in, in the United Kingdom ever. Um, it was a huge undertaking to deliver so many events um, across the whole of UK, um, you know, to, to counter managers and also counter assistants. Um, because you have there I mean, 7,000 uh, 7, four managers. And yeah. I think we saw somewhere that you don't begin the training until, is it five days before Horizon is, is provided to them? That's true. Um, so there was a short, very short space of time to carry out quite a considerable amount of training. It, it, was, a, it was a huge undertaking. I mean, um, we were... I realised that there are some things that we had a very good rapport in the most part with the trainers and the postmasters uh, and the staff. We had a, the trainers had a very good rapport from what I remember and what I'm, I'm sure of actually with the postmasters, and both understood it was um, it was difficult to 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 train that many people in that time. Um, so the course had to be very generic and it had to run exactly the same on every event, and and that is quite a difficult ask when you've got so many events running concurrently. Can we look at page 41, please? At the bottom of that page. Um, this is under the heading Horizon Field Support and Migration Visit. And it says at the bottom, it is ICL's path pathways experience that users require further support after training to help remember topics covered by their training event and build confidence. Uh, over the page, it, in daily use. Therefore, the Horizon Field Support Visit is part of this document for recommendation purposes only. Um, can you tell us a, a little bit about the role of the field support officers? I can't, actually. Uh, it's not something I, um, I, I remember at all. I mean, my as it was at this time where we were delivering so many events, it was a case of one of the things, we did all those events, and, and to the best of my recollection, to, to the best of my memory, uh, recollection, that's what word I was looking for. Recollection, I don't think we missed one event in all those events. So a big part of it for me was making sure the trainers were up to speed and they were out. The, the Horizon Field Support was, it was really not something I had a great deal to do with. Um, if we scroll down on that page, there's also reference to additional training. I think this is what you were mentioning earlier, that the additional training function becomes operable when any member of staff fails the competency test. So there was the possibility of additional training. Well, I lived I lived in a small village uh, in the Fylde, actually, and um, our it was a very small village, and I knew our local postmaster and postmistress. 
and the postmistress actually uh, passed the course, and her husband had to go back for remedial, which he uh, which he delighted in telling everybody who went into the post office. But it just went to show that you know there was that additional training there. He was quite a bit older than she was, and um, and he undertook the remedial training. And po and after that, I mean, as far as I can recall, again uh, for a good time after they had no problem at all with the system. Can we look at page 46, paragraph 11? There's reference there to new product and update training. It says, ICL Pathway are not currently contracted to provide this service. However, ICL Pathway will be pleased to deliver this service subject to change control. Um, do you recall, was there training for new products? Or was that something that was ultimately agreed? Uh not on the rollout, no. Not as far as I can remember. I don't remember any new products coming online at all during that uh, during that time. We went with the same version all the way through uh, the training. Thank you. So we're here, November 1999 um, is this document. Uh, did you carry out any analysis after the March 1999 report uh, to see if the two complaints that we spoke about earlier, the issues with the length of the course, which remained at uh, one and a half days, and issues with balancing. Uh, did you carry out any analysis as to whether um, the situation had improved insofar as those were concerned? I, I think, uh, you know, coming back to what I said before, and I, I think you could go right up to the end of it. Obviously, the trainers got more of a favor with it, and, and they probably weren't as much there because the, the trainers then would slow down or they'd see people who were struggling with it. They were a lot easier to to spot when you were more au fait with the course and they would actually then go up. And then, as I said to you before, I know trainers that actually stayed behind in their own time uh, and helped a few people who, who had that one particular bit, they would say, stay behind at the end and I'll give you uh, a bit more on it. Um, so probably it did, it did, um, it did improve. Uh, but the law, the, on any course you went on there, because of the vast spread of, of knowledge and age to be, without being ages, and age, Quite a number of them had had no IT experience at all. Some of them were quite au fait with IT. So it was it was a, a real, there was no, um, how can I put it? There was no level playing field between who actually attended the course. Um, so it could be a massive difference. I think there was somebody in, well into their 80s were still running a post office and had not been out the village for years. So it, it's, I never had anything to do at all with IT. So. You know, somebody like that coming on the course, it was a massive, um, it, was, it was a massive culture shock to them. So, so the message to the trainers was spend some more time with those who are having some difficulties. Um, but there was no actual analysis or further report into uh, the broader picture. No, they, they knew that they were, uh, there were some people who were really, who were going to struggle. You know, you do when you're training, you can see people there. And as I say, the uh, the trainers that we used, and, you know, and I can almost I speak for all of them, I think, uh, had a great rapport with the with the postmasters, and they wanted to deliver a good session. And if they saw anybody struggling, as and I, I know many that did, they would actually, if they could, stay and, and help that person a, a bit more if they could. But they would also, again, go through the supporting documentation where they could get further help, just so that when they did leave, they felt a bit more confident. So as things progress towards national rollout in January of 2000, do you think that those problems, in particular those two, length and issues with balancing, do you think that those have been resolved? No. No. Uh, not with everybody. Uh, I would say certainly on the course, no, they wouldn't have been resolved. I think the training, uh, the training stayed as was because it had to be that generic training. I think the help desk got better from what I remember. Um, and I think the people who were supporting in PLCL got better. So I would say the issue on the course was that it was probably felt it was too short. But the support with the with the handbook and the quick reference guides and the uh, uh, and as I said the help desk, they got better. Um, the help desk was was an interesting one purely because, as I said to you, the culture and I, I've been to several post offices. Anything that went wrong or something they didn't understand, they immediately phoned the help desk. They had manuals there from post office to actually go through certain procedures, uh, but they, they very rarely used them. It was a case of pick the phone up, somebody in the help desk could talk them through it, and that was it. And of course, with Horizon, because there was a, a lot of new material, uh, there were many times where they phoned the help desk, you know, continuously uh, 
rather than looking up a, a simple process in either the quick reference guides or the handbook because it was their nature that's what they did you said the course had to stay at one and a half days what why did it have to stay at one and a half days well, I don't know why it had to stay at one and a half days. That wasn't my decision. I mean, if they'd have upped it to two days or three days, then we would have ad adapted accordingly. Um, I think it was because of the, the amount of courses that needed to be carried out. Um, I think it was dis it was deemed by both um, the hierarchy in PLCL and uh, Knowledge Build Peritas that that was enough time um, to give an understanding of the of the actual um, of the hardware and the processes, um, and should people um, not be quite as a fair with it, uh, and wanted more time, there was either additional training, or there was actually other support available to them. Whose call would it have been? You you said uh, at ICL and POCL. Who, whose call would it have been that one and a half days was sufficient? Um, I think they would have looked at the courseware and thought we could do it in that time. Um, I think the call would have been mainly POCL. Um, and even though, even if somebody like Stuart Gerns had raised it as an issue, um, there, there obviously would have been other implications, possibly, I don't know. Uh, I wasn't privy to that, to those conversations. We were told that was the time we had. We had to cover that courseware in that time. Um, several times it was expressed that it was difficult uh, with some delegates to get um, confident in that time. But again, I, I keep coming back to it, but there was other support available to them. So we did what we were told, basically, within that timescale. I did not have anything to do with um, the actual timescale itself. Okay. I'm going to take you to one more document before we take a short break. Uh, that document is poll 00028441. Um, and can we look at page three, please? Thank you. Um, now, this is a post office document. Is it a document that you are familiar with at all? No. Um, it's dated January 2000, and it's called the Christmas Horizon Research Report. If we turn over the page to page four, it says... This document accompanies the report entitled Christmas Horizon Research, January 2000, by Lorna Green. Uh, the report discusses the results of a telephone questionnaire carried out in December 1999 with a sample of 335 national rollout post offices and asks questions about various aspects of the Horizon program. Uh, this document contains the actual comments made by each respondent. So we're now looking um, at December of 1999. And can we look please, at page four, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the next page, page five, there's a table of contents, uh, and one of the areas that respondents were asked about is training, that's number three. Can we look at page 14, which is where we will see those comments? Um, I'm not going to go through every comment, but let's have a look at that first section. So there were complaints about not enough training. Um, there wasn't enough training. On the course, we were booked to go together and didn't get the appointment. We needed much more training and more time. Balancing needs looking at. Uh, it was completely inadequate. Day and a half was not enough, especially training for balancing was concerned. I'm used to computers, but some of the training was horrendous. Uh, good, but not long enough. I only got one and a half days training. We needed more training. It was too rushed. There wasn't enough training, not enough training, there wasn't enough training, it was good but not enough, we need a bit more training, there was not enough, not enough, we didn't cover enough, we needed to be taught more on the Horizon system, maybe spread over a week, uh, we really needed more training, etc, etc. That, that's the first entry, so that's not enough training. Over the page, there's another section on not enough training on balancing says there, training for accounting was very bad. Balancing took hours to sort out and was kept up until midnight sometimes. Tried to call help desk, but it was almost always engaged, uh, but needed more time on balancing. The first day was all right, but the quality of the training was not good on the second day. Uh, because we concentrated on serving customers, which was very easy, but needed training on balancing in back office, I think it was useless, inadequate, particularly for balancing. They didn't inform us very much on cash accounts. 
but not enough time, especially on the balancing side. The training was very inadequate on the accounting side. Did not allow enough time, especially on the balancing side of it. Just inadequate. We were trained to do the counter procedures, but not on the office administration side. Balancing training was very poor. I taught myself, etc. And over the page, there's another section on not enough time allowed. And it says there, I was trying to cram too much in not enough time. It was trying to cram too much in, in not enough time. Inadequate day and a half was not long enough. No time to practice anything. It could ideally have been a longer training session. We ended up being left totally confused. There was not enough time. Um, so looking at December of 1999, just before the national rollout in January of 2000, um, you see those same themes as you saw in, in the original report, the not enough time theme and the not enough help with balancing theme. Um, were those concerns raised with you at the time uh, or anybody in your team uh, by the post office? Not by the post office. I mean, obviously, we knew from delegates um, that they, on the appraisal feedback form. Um, I would say, looking at those comments there, it, we never had that, that many comments of that nature on the feedback forms that we got you know, from each course. Um, it's, it's, as I say, it, it's how you phrase the question as well. I mean, one of the one of the things I noticed with sometimes with post office, and I'm not saying there was enough time. I, I agree that there was uh, there's a thread going through that, but it's a case of if you ask somebody what they didn't like about something, um, they tend to actually come up with a particular answer. Uh, and I, I've noticed on 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 uh, feedback myself where they'll actually put up what did you like about something on the board, and then say what didn't you like, and then people see what the things that they did like and think they have to counterbalance it. With things that they didn't like, um, there's a, I agree about the no time and uh, or not enough time, I should say. Um, but it's a difficult one, really. We did what we could within the time that we had, and and none of them there have said even after I um, you know sought further assistance. None of them have actually said that as far as I've seen so far. None of them have sought any further assistance. None of them have talked about the help desk. None of them have talked about supporting documentation. You know, so it's all about the training. Yes, the training was would have benefited from more time, but actually nobody's even mentioned the other support uh, elements that they were to the course. So are they seeing the course in just isolation? Are they seeing the course with the other things that were available to them? Um, what, was it just a, a coincidence that those same two themes seemed to crop up again? in December of 99, as we saw in March 1999? No, I don't think it, I don't think, I think it's no coincidence at all. I think it's very true in the fact that some people would, would see that they or think or believe or were actually right, that there probably wasn't enough time on the balancing, studying that in isolation or, um, or actually saw it in the system. But what I would say is you, you have to look at that in, in, uh, with regards to the other help that was available. And you have to look at balance that with some of the people that thought it was fine. I mean, all, all we've seen so far is documents mainly that said there wasn't enough time. Um, and, and I accept that. I, I'm not disputing that. And I think you could, on any training, you will get, particularly when it's a little bit complex, which it was on the balancing, that, that it, is, it, is a, it is difficult. And the other thing, as I said earlier, in the fact that we were, we were, the actual system took them away from what they've been doing, some of them for years, and taking a great pride in, to actually do something completely different, and they wanted more time. Thank you. So that might be an appropriate time yeah. to take a mid-afternoon break. <coughs> How are we doing generally with this witness, Mr. Blake? I, I'm aiming to finish for 4.30. So if we take a 10-minute break now, that Fine. should be possible. Very good. <coughs> Me? Uh, can you hear and see me? Yes, I can hear. Excellent, thank you. Um, can we look at FUJ 00119801, please? Um, this is the counter manager's training pack. Is this a document that's familiar to you at all? Yes, I, I believe it. Yes, I, that one is familiar. Um, it says at the bottom it's version 1. Um, do you remember at all, would this have been um, consistent in 
1999, 2000? I mean, w were there significant changes to this at all? I, I can't remember um, specific changes. What, what would have happened was it, there may have been increments to it, but the version numbers would have changed. So it might have been that changes were made. They would have to go backwards and forwards for approval with POCL. Um, and if they did approve any changes that were that were made, then it would have been version two or two point zero. So um, it would be a whole. If it's a whole number at the front, it meant that was the actual document we were using at the time. Thank you. Can we look at page five, please? Five is is the agenda for the first day. Yeah. And then if we turn over the page, it's day two. Um, is, that, is this gender familiar to you? Is, is that the kind of time period that you dedicated to certain events throughout the training? I mean, let, let's look at balancing, for example. We have there 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., 11.15 to 12.30, um, and then there's followed by a role play and performance standard assessment, but it looks as though there were two hours, 15 minutes uh, on balancing in the second day. Is that right? I, uh, I can't remember. It must be if it's on there. That's what we would, that's what the trainers would have done, yeah. Yes. So, so the aim, uh, we've said a day and a half, so the aim is to finish at 1.30 on day two. Yeah. Can we look at page 63, please? Thank you. So this is training insofar as balancing is concerned. And can we just scroll on to the next page and over the page again? These are the topics that were covered in that section on balancing. Thank you. And perhaps we could scroll again and again. Thank you. Um, it seems as though that's quite a lot of information to fit into that two hours, 15 minutes. Would you agree with that? Quite a lot of different topics to, to be discussed there. Yeah, I agree. I mean, re reflecting on this and reflecting on what we discussed before the break, do you think that a day and a half's training was adequate? For some people, yes. For some people, obviously, it would have benefited from more time. All I can say to you is, you know, that as far as the actual timings went, then that wasn't an issue for me. I, I couldn't, I couldn't affect that at all. I mean, uh, obviously, it um, what it came down to, I don't know whether it was the amount of people to be trained, whether it was the cost involved, et cetera, et cetera. But it, um, you know, we were given a day and a half that was approved by PLCL, um, and we had to get in those. Uh, topics within that time scale. And I think it was your evidence before the break that you have to look at things in the round and it's not just the training itself, it's also things like the workbooks. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, they, they, there, were other, um, there were other support available to postmasters um, and to counter assistants. Um, what I would say to you from personal experience, I did go around a number of post offices to watch the manual processes, um, was that they actually very rarely used written documentation um, when they had an issue. It was nearly always um, the help desk, and this is one thing I did pass back up to both uh, my boss, Stuart Kearns, and to PLCL, was that I thought, because their time was reasonably short, that they may get a, a, a lot more inquiries um, to the help desk. Um, you said you fed that back to the post office. Can you remember a particular name of anybody? Well, it would have been, Sue Smith would certainly have been part of it because she was my main contact, really, within the post office. And she tended to get together any any people that would um, that would be involved in what we were discussing. So, um, and I knew for a fact that the, uh, that the help desk would be under some pressure because, um, as I say, it was a short amount of time. It was given out to the post offices, uh, sorry, to the postmasters and counter assistants that the help desk would have been trained. And quite a lot of them, from what I remember, were quite pleased about that because, of course, they had issues with other things within the post office. And, um, and of course, that, that was their first port of call was to the help desk. Can we look at poll 3090452, please? Because um, I want to ask you about the training workbooks. What were workbooks? 
training workbooks were something they could actually use. Remember, I said that the um, the actual system had a training mode as part of the system, um, and they could have used the workbooks to explain certain functions to um, to other members of staff or to new members of staff, um, and they could also be used as a reference to um, to an operation on the system. Uh, and am I right in saying that there were ten separate workbooks? Uh, yes, I believe it was ten. Would it surprise you to hear that they are, in total, over 480 pages in length? No. Um, when were sub-postmasters and their assistants and others expected to have read this? Was this before the training event, after the training event? It, w it would be after the training event, but what I would say to you there is that it wasn't a, a reading document. It was a, uh, a reference document for particular functions on the system. So it wasn't something you sat down at night and, and read. It was something that if you needed to train somebody else or you wanted to refresh a process in your mind, you could pick up the uh, one of the workbooks or the workbooks and, uh, and refresh yourself on that process. So you had the day and a half's training, let's say, if you're a manager, and then you have um, this 480-page uh, workbook to, to go through if you had a problem. Um, were there significant documents like this to read before the training? Uh, not as I recall. And the other thing, although there's a lot of pages, as, as you say, quite a lot of them are diag diagrammatical, um, because obviously um, there were a lot of screenshots included in the workbooks, as I recall, um, because obviously uh, the picture tells a thousand words, and, and it was a case of, it was a way of showing what would appear on the screen to, to assist the, uh, the post office staff to actually complete the process. Can we look at page 7, please, and near the bottom of page 7? Um, thank you. It's the penultimate paragraph on page 7. It says, The workbooks do not cover every possible transaction which you can perform on the Horizon system. If you need further help, or if a specific example is not covered, you should consult the Horizon system user guide. Um, can you tell us briefly what the Horizon system user guide was? Um, they were they were short guides, as I recall, to actually cover some of the processes, um, and I think some of the processes were fairly generic, as, as I've said before. And um, certainly the EPOS, quite a lot of the EPOS ones. If you sold one thing, it would be quite on the system. It's the same process for selling something else. It wasn't uh, it wasn't a completely different process for everything that you did on on uh, on EPOS. Um, but the work, but sorry, the, um, the Horizon System User Guide, where they were also uh, a supplement to this, where you could actually, um, they were more like quick reference guides. Um, we have the User Guide. I'm not going to take you to it, but for the purpose of the transcript, it's poll 00090227. Uh, would it surprise you to hear that the um, Horizon System User Guide was 819 pages in length? Yeah, it would actually. Maybe perhaps I've mixed up there with the quick reference guides. I think maybe I have. Um, I'm I, I'm not I'm not aware of the user guide, um, but the quick reference guides were were a one one page uh, quick reference as its name would suggest a quick reference guide to a specific process. Um, I, I'm not quite sure about the user guide. I I, I can't recall exactly what that contained and and uh, what it was for. I can't help it, Mr. Blake. In the old days, you could have waved the 819 pages around. <laughs> um, well, I think, I'm not sure the inquiry can uh, can pay for that much printing. <laughs> I'm sure it um, can't, yeah. But we have here a 480-page workbook, uh, or 10 workbooks that <coughs> comprise 480 pages. Um, they themselves refer to 819-page Horizon System user guide. Um, did the length of all these documents, I accept that there were these quick reference guides, but do the length of this workbook and the document that's referred to there uh, give any indication as to the complexity of the overall system? To a point, yes, but I also think that they were there, as, a, as the name would suggest, as a reference to a particular action. If it had been you had to read through it all and then actually do things, then, then fine, I agree with you. It would be far too hefty to do. Um, but if you were looking out to complete a, an individual process, then, um, then I would say they were fit for purpose. 
And the other thing, of course, is that PLCL would have gone through these um, and they wouldn't have got anywhere near the offices unless the PLCL agreed them and signed them off. You gave evidence earlier about a postmaster who may be in their 80s whose first experience with a computer is having Horizon put into their post office. Um, Do you think that workbooks that are 480 pages in length and refer to a document that's uh, 819 pages, do you think that that is helpful to those kinds of postmasters? That's a difficult one. I, I can't really comment on that. I mean, they were they were done for a specific purpose, and and in my own view, they um, they match that purpose. I agree with you. If you if somebody had to sit down and read them all, then then no, they're not. Um, they, they would they would be too hefty to actually uh, to do that. What I would say to you is that from the post offices that I went to on the manual process, there were several large user guides and other guides within the post office for the manual system. So. Um, whether you know, as I say, as a reference, they were fine, but as a as a as a bedtime reading, no, they weren't. Can we look at page three hundred and sixty-seven, please? This is workbook ten, um, which is entitled "Balancing Using the Horizon System." This is the section of the workbook that addresses balancing. Thank you. Um, could we scroll over the page onto page three hundred and sixty-nine? Uh, this workbook 10 was 115 pages long. Does that sound right to you? Um, yeah, if you say so. I mean, I can't recall exactly. If we look down, these are all the topics that are covered in the balancing workbook. Could we scroll down a little bit more? And over the page, over to the next page. This is section two continued, and it goes down there to page 115. Um, Does the number of topics that are covered in that workbook indicate to you that cramming the issue of balancing into that second day, the second half day um, of the training was not sufficient? What what I would actually say back on that, and I think I've already uh, conceded that we would have liked more time, is the fact that although these may seem foreign uh, to somebody who isn't a post office person, um, they actually mean that, you know, straight away, they know what shared stock unit decorations are. They know what declared stock is. Um, You know, so they're not all brand new topics to them. It's just that they're carrying out what they normally did on a paper-based system onto an electronic system. So um, it may seem quite daunting if you just read through it and said, well, that's a lot to take in. But actually, it wasn't completely foreign to the uh, to the to, to the PLCL workers, in my view. Can we turn back to page two hundred and eighty-seven? And this is training workbook eight. Um, training workbook eight dealt with help and basic maintenance of the Horizon system. Thank you. Can we look at page two nine six, which is within workbook eight? And it says at the top there, section one, horizon system contingencies. Um, if you have a failure to um, of the complete system or one of its components, these are the procedures to adopt. Um, now, when it says failure um, of the complete system or one of its components, am I right in saying that's something like a power failure or a screen failure? Um, it's not addressing errors in transactions. Or software errors in transactions, for example. Can you just repeat? Can you just repeat that? I, I didn't quite. Absolutely. So, so this section addresses what's called a complete uh, a failure of the complete system or one of its components, and then it goes on to list nine topics: one power failure, two monitor touchscreen failure, three magnetic swipe card reader. Uh, the, these sound very much like hardware issues and not software yeah. issues. Yeah. Um, and for each of those, apart from scales, the advice seems to be um, to telephone the help desk. So if we look at power failure, uh, the most likely cause of a complete system failure is a loss of power for one reason or another. Telephone the Horizon system help desk as soon as possible. 
Uh, the next one, monitor touchscreen failure. It again says call the Horizon system help desk. Uh, magnetic swipe card reader failure. Again, call the system help desk. Smart card reader, call the Horizon system help desk. If we scroll down, keyboard failure, call the, the Horizon system help desk. Uh, six, barcode reader failure, call the Horizon system help desk. Scales failure isn't dealt with by the help desk. Um, but moving on to eight, counter, again, call the Horizon System Help Desk. And nine, multiple equipment failure, call the Horizon System Help Desk. Um, am I right in saying that there isn't a section in Training Workbook 8 on software errors? I, I honestly don't know. I, I, looking at this now, I, I think I can't recall any of this book. I really can't recall it at all. I thought I did when it, when you first put the thing up, but I don't remember ever seeing this failure part of any of any book that written. I think this is a POCL document. So I, I thought you had said that the workbooks you you had contributed to. Had you had you not contributed? I had to contributed to the workbook, but that, I, certainly the, none of none of this uh, none of these things here I, I wrote. I, I I can't recall writing any of those. I can't re recall being. Uh, involved in any of those at all because surely there would have been an easier way to write that than actually do every single one, you know what I mean it, um, I, I, I certainly didn't um, I may have known about the document I don't think I did because I've never I can't recall seeing this at all It's called a training workbook is this not the document that you recall being provided to those who were trained <coughs> by yourselves? No, no it isn't um, do you recall any document in particular being provided to those who you trained? Yes, there was a, there was a workbook. There was a, a, a system workbook. But as far as I'm aware, and you know, some things I just think I, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure that, that, that this, these elements were not in that book. I mean, this is... If we look at the top right-hand corner... Um, it's dated July 1999, so that was a period that you were involved in the training. Absolutely. The reference, is that a reference that you recognise at all? No, not at all. It's, uh, it's a pathway reference, and uh, it's... Maybe, I, I just honestly don't recall, that. I don't recall that those failures. If I'd, have been, if I'd have been involved in it, I certainly wouldn't have put each one as separate. I would have actually listed the potential failures and then put, called it, it's a bit, you know, monotonous to, to list every single one and put, uh, you know, um, follow the, uh, sorry, ring the, the help desk. Um, it's just not something I feel I would have done. I don't, I don't remember taking, doing this in any part at all. Whether I did or not, maybe I did. I, I just don't remember that and it doesn't sound like I would have been involved in it looking at it. In terms of the documentation that you were involved in or that you do recall from training, do you remember there being any documents addressing um, software errors? Uh, or what to do in the case of a software error? No. no. Um, we've heard evidence of, for example, workarounds and, and a known error log that was held by ICL. Um, were those things that you were aware of at all? That there were certain procedures that you could... Uh, use to in order to get around a problem, a workaround? No, not something I did. Um, do you recall things like workarounds being addressed in any way in, in the training that was provided to... No, I don't recall that at all. Um, can we stay on this document at page 297? You may, in light of the evidence you've given, you may not be able to assist with this at all. But let's see where we get to on this. Um, and can we bring up on the same screen another document, and it's FUJ00117722, page 15. These are two different versions of Training Workbook 8. Uh, the first version is on the left-hand side, and that's dated the 24th of July. Um, well, in fact, it says 24th of July 2000, but it's called issue one issue one and then on the right hand side you have 29th of july 99 which uh, is 
referred to as issue two. It's not clear which of those two it is earlier. Um, but what I want to take you to is that note there, the, bold, the wording in bold. One of them says, should post office counter staff have difficulty in using the Horizon system or the training documentation, they should contact the Horizon system help desk. For problems with the Horizon system user guide or, ba or the balancing with Horizon document, you should contact the network business support center. No, no, that, that's just confirmed it for me. I had nothing to do with that because I would have remembered that. Um, this document is not one that I was involved in. Thank you. Um, if, if, we'll stay with the document because I, I do want to ask you about the help desk and the um, Network Business Support Centre and your recollection of those. The one on the right simply says, should post office counter staff have difficulty in using the system or the documentation, they should contact the Horizon System Help Desk. Uh, the service hours of the Horizon System Help Desk are as follows. Um, what I wanted to ask you, and it, you don't need to refer to this document at all, just to, to your recollection, is who were um, sub-postmasters, assistants, uh, et cetera, told to contact if they were having difficulty with the system uh, in a way that affected balancing, uh, but that wasn't, for example, caused by hardware? So uh, who, who would I call if I had a software issue that was affecting balancing? The help desk. As I said to you before, there was a, the, the culture on, and forget the horizon system, the culture in every post office I visited is if there was an issue of any sort, whether it be with a customer, whether it be with benefits or anything else, it was straight on to the help desk. They very, in fact, I never saw one refer to any of the current post office documentation that was in the offices. They they had a really good help desk and they were very reliant on it. Is my is my opinion um, and, and my uh, my view of it when I actually went around the offices. And what is your recollection of the Network Business Support Centre? Didn't know anything about that. Um, I, I probably had heard about it, but I, I didn't know. Um, I thought it was maybe a subsidiary of the help desk. I had nothing, that, again, nothing at all to do with the, uh, with the um, support centre. Do you recall postmasters ever being advised to contact the Network Business Support Centre? Was the advice that was given in training always contact the Horizon System help desk? It would have been the help desk. I don't. I honestly can't recall and I would be surprised because uh, it would have been something that stuck in my mind. I don't remind, uh, I can't recall, uh, I'm ever being told to contact the Business Support Centre. Thank you very much. I will skip the next question because it asks about the same document. Um, do you recall discussing with those who you trained um, what to do in the case of a, a software error uh, and a software in particular that had affected balancing? The only thing I think that we actually mentioned was if there was a, an issue with balancing, whether it was something to do with the software or they were just having trouble with the actual process, was to first of all look at the um, the, the supporting materials, um, and then actually if it couldn't be resolved that way, then obviously to contact the help desk. If they couldn't balance using the system, they would normally balance manually, um, and that would have been, as far as I'm aware, acceptable to the post office because of the system uh, a system failure. Thank you very much. Those documents can be taken down. I have a few further discrete topics to ask you about. The first uh, is field officers, but I think you've said that you, you don't really recall very much at all about field officers. Is that no. right? Um, I do want to show you FUJ4001520. This relates to field officers, but it's actually relevant also to... Um, those who you trained in general. It's FUJ4001520. This is a Horizon Field Support Officer Counter Manager's specification um, it, from the summer of 1999. So uh, July 1999, there seems to have been a proposal to amend the course for counter manager, um, the, the support officers. And can we look at page four, please? Is this a document you, you remember seeing or a, a topic oh, that you remember? Oh, oh. I would have seen it because of the author. I would definitely have seen it. 
So th this seems to be a request by the post office uh, for an amendment to the two-day counter managers course, but I, I don't believe it's the counter managers course broadly. I, I it seems to be for the Horizon Field support officers. Um, do you remember this at all? I uh, not really, but I can uh, the general gist of it maybe, but not uh, not in any detail. So, so some of the reasons given for amending that course uh, are, are given here. Increased length of course, two days training not enough, no practice time, um, more training and practice on balancing procedures, a little further down, um, one day balancing cash accounting. And if we turn over the page to a proposed timetable, it seems as though the proposal was to extend the the course that was given to the Horizon Field Support Officers. And we see there, there's a day three. Uh, so whereas day two, you have an overview of balancing at 2.15. And if we, can we look, um, zoom out slightly? Um, so you have the overview of, ba oh, um, perhaps I'll zoom in a little bit more, if that's possible. Thank you very much. So day two, um, you have overview of balancing overview of balancing processing reports, SU balance, uh, but then moving on to day three, which is the next column, you have quite a lot more office balancing and cash account, suspense account. Um, is this something you remember at all, this structure of training? No, I, I don't remember this three-day you know, proposal at all. Um, I, I, I probably would have seen it, but I, I can't remember. Or maybe I didn't see it. It might have been something that the author was doing with, um, uh, with Stuart or the post office. I mean, I think I think I'm, I agree with what you said earlier on. Everybody would have liked more time. The problem is, is that you have to work sometimes, even though you raise it as an issue, and it was raised as issues, that you have to work with what the the client is um, is proposing, and also your own company. So it, um, it it's very easy to say that there should be more time and et cetera, et cetera. But there's a number of issues about more time. And it's certainly the time it would take overall, the cost. Is that there's a lot more than just, oh, we'd like an extra day, so we'll put an extra day on. So it's, it's, um, it wasn't at my level to make that decision. I mean, this, this particular proposal for the, support of, the field support officers, it seems to address some of those concerns that we saw earlier this afternoon uh, and, yeah. and throughout this afternoon about not enough time and more on balancing because it provides an extra day uh, that addresses balancing. Do you think that's the kind of thing that should have been adopted for all of the managers? To be honest with you, it would have, yeah. I mean, I can't say, it, you know, I wouldn't have liked that. It would have made the course better. It would have made it appear to be so rushed. Uh, but the problem the problem with it was, was that the fact that wasn't our decision. We could make all the suggestions and, and pass feedback back, and feedback was readily available to both PLCL and um, and to um, knowledge pool at the time and ICL. Um, and if their course had to be extended, they were the ones that would have to decide for it to be extended. I had no, I had no sort of control of that at all. They, they, they said this had to be covered in a certain amount of time. And to the best of our ability, that's what we did. If we look at the, on the right-hand column, about halfway down, it says introduce dodgy balance comp. That might be competition or um, comp... <laughs> Yeah, I think what that would have been is that they would have they would have actually had a balance that was um, that had mistakes in it, and uh, with with common mistakes that they could possibly make, and the delegates then probably would have had to to look and say, well, that's a mistake, that's a mistake, and uh, and and look at it in that way. But again, I'm guessing that because I, I had no I had no input into this document. Is that kind of thing that that kind of balancing common mistakes? training is, is that the kind of thing that did or didn't appear in the manager's training uh no it didn't appear in the manager's training it was all the processes to complete balancing um you know as, as would normally be done in um in, in, a, in an actual office um the process is to to use on the system to balance the post office the problem with that is of course is that you know even on the manual um even on the manual balancing there are uh, discrepancies sometimes or mistakes, which, which which doesn't produce a balance. I mean, I talked to many postmasters that said they'd, they'd spent hours and hours on balancing day trying to 
trying to balance the post office where a very simple mistake had been made. Um, so problems occurred with manual balancing as well as uh, balancing on the system, it would appear. And, and th there were quite regular uh, issues with the daily balance, sorry, the post office balance uh, on the uh, on the manual system, it wasn't all just on the process on the uh, uh, on the automated system. Not every post office balanced correctly. That uh, that I do know for a fact, and quite a major quite a number of them didn't balance correctly, or didn't balance correctly until they'd done quite a number of hours after they should have balanced, trying to find the problem. I'm, I'm going to move on to training the trainers. Um, I think you've told us how many trainers you think there were. Um, can you tell us th their background at all? How, how were they? They came from they came from a various uh, a various backgrounds. Um, there were a few that were ex-military. There were some that were ex-post office. Uh, there were some that had trained on other systems like the national lottery. Um, and what we did at first there was a um, there was an initial inter well obviously a CV and then uh, initial interview. And from that initial interview they were called forward. And there was uh, three weeks of training for that particular trainer. And it was uh, subsequent to that, if they passed those, at the end of each week, there would be an assessment. And if you passed the assessments after every week, so you passed the three assessments, then they would be employed as a trainer on the system. Um, the actual uh, first week was about general training, use of training equipment, such as over projectors and other things that you would use as a, a trainer. The second week was uh, doing specific uh, parts of um, of training and obviously dealing with sometimes problems, etc. Um, and the third week was all on the system. So they would do elements of the system for obvious reasons. They couldn't do every single bit of the, of the, uh, of the training as a test. It would have taken too long. But by that stage, you could tell who could actually deliver on the system. Um, and there was assessment there. They had to pass all three assessments before they were employed. Did they have uh, any experience in working in a live post office system? Yeah, quite a few did. Um, they, um, I can't remember exactly, but on that many trainers, some of them were ex-POCL, um, not many. Um, a lot of them had worked on IT systems before. Uh, quite a number were lottery. There was, Like I said, there was a, a few military. It was a very arduous um, role as well. It, it sounds easy to go to an hotel and set up and everything else, but to be honest with you, they were traveling great distances in between some of the events. And, um, and, and it was quite a physical role as well, because you were having to break down the classroom quite often you know, after one evening, uh, sorry, one day, and then traveling during the evening, set up the next day for the next event. So but in terms of their actual real life experience in, in using Horizon, uh, being a new system, had any of them actually used Horizon within a live post office? No, no. Um, Moving on, can we look at FUJ3078743, please? Thank you. This is a document from yourself. Is it a document that you recall at all? Uh, not in detail again, but I'm sure. Um, it, it's the 12th of May 1999, and it relates to the live trial operation plan. If we look over the page, it refers to something called the cash account expert team. Do, do you remember that? It seems as though there was an expert team uh, that was um, put in place on a Wednesday to assist with issues relating to cash accounts. No, I'm sorry, I don't recall that. If we look at the bottom of that page, it says, D. Fletcher will attend the ICL Stevenage site to oversee the activities on the ground and provide a focus for management reporting and work with OSD to determine staffing requirements for Thursday morning. Is that anything you're able to assist us with at all? No, I'm sorry. That, um, the D. Fletcher, I probably did meet him, but I don't know him. Um, can we look at FUJ3016958? Ah, so can I just say, in relation to that previous document, there's clearly a, a um, it's been brought to our attention via a request from a core participant, but it seems that that document, it's D. Fletcher rather than Kevin Fletcher, so in fact you may have had nothing to do with that topic or whatsoever. Is that right? It's a different uh, Fletcher. Well, 
It, it is a different factor, but it actually says on the comments, it gave the example of a simple report taking three minutes to print. The performance is unacceptably slow and it's getting worse with success. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I was talking about the previous document that I just took you to. Oh, the, no, no. The, I the cash account expert team, that document yeah, was, was written by a D Fletcher, so it must be a different Fletcher. Yeah. Um, this particular document I've been asked to ask you about, and it's an error log, which we know is a pinnacle, and it has your name there having discussed an issue. Um, it relates, if we look on the top right-hand corner, to a, a training counter and an error or a difficulty. I think it's, uh, it's a complaint that it's unacceptably slow. Uh, is this something you recall at all? Yes, very well. Um, it actually was switching over to the, um, to the training part of the system. Um, it was, I think the contractually, it was that there would be a training mode on the system. Um, what in reality at first there was an issue with the, how long it took to change over from live to um, or to change it from what would have been the live system to the training system. But that was in live. It wasn't in, it wasn't on the actual standalone system. It was on the actual system itself. And were there issues that you experienced with training counters at all? No, because of course all our systems were they were training anyway. They were always in training. What I'm saying to you is in the actual offices, when the system was installed, there was a training mode that they could switch to. One of the issues that they had was that to, to switch from live to training um, took a, a lot too long, really. It was a long time and it became an issue. And was that issue resolved? I believe so, but I'm not sure. I think it still probably today takes a while. to. There's that much information, particularly with benefits and that's that the system is linked to. But to, to actually run in a mode that wouldn't affect any of that, it takes a long time to change over. I know they improved it quite a lot, um, but how much in the end, I couldn't honestly say. It didn't really, but it didn't really bother the training, apart from the fact it was a, it was an assistance to the training that we gave that they could operate in training mode in in the live environment, if that makes sense. But they had to come out of the live system to go into the training system. They do it on a lot of EPOS systems as well, where in supermarkets they can actually quite often, or they can, change over from a live till, if you like, to a training till. This was very much the same, where they could change over from a live horizon system onto a training horizon system in the office. Thank you very much, Mr. Fletcher. Those are all of my questions. Um, Mr. Steen has identified a, a another version of a workbook. Unfortunately, we've implemented a new process, which means there's going to be a difficulty in getting that document onto screen. Um, right. So we can see where we can get to. We can take a break. Um, it depends on how important that document is, Mr. Steen. Well, so the position in relation to the document I've identified is that uh, the witness, Mr. Fletcher, referred to Workbook 8 as being a uh, possible post office document. Mm. Um, there is a version of it which has an FUJ, so a Fujitsu reference, which appears to be a pathway version of Workbook 8, um, and that would deal with the point raised by Mr. Fletcher. Now, um, in a way, I've made the point <laughs> by, by, by putting forward uh, the difference. Um, I'm happy to leave it at that. Uh, I would suggest, sir, that you and, your, uh, and the panel um, uh, peruse Workbook 8 in the version from Fujitsu, which, for completeness, is FUJ, Double zero, double one, double seven, two two, okay. and it contains the same points which relate to uh, basically go to the help desk. And, um, and is this the, ultimately the sort of factual point that can be dealt with by a, a simple written request to the representative of, say, Paul and Fujitsu, who will provide the answer, or, or what do you think? Well, uh, I think on the face of the document, it answers that particular It, it actually answers it. Um, because yeah. it, it pretty clearly says at the very top of the document uh, where it's from, ICL Horizon. We can, in fact, bring, it, bring up precisely right. a Although document that makes that very point. So it, it's the second page of this document. If we look over the page... And so, so do you actually have a question for the witness? No. I, 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 after all with, with the explanation <laughs> I provided, uh, I, I don't... You've given the evidence, yeah? Exactly. Yeah, right, okay. Perhaps Just I could ask Mr counsel. Fletcher. Mr Fletcher, if you, if you look on the document that's being brought onto screen, this is workbook, uh, training workbook 8, and it says there, copyright, knowledge pool, limited, 1999-2000. Is this really a document that you wouldn't have seen 
or didn't don't recall seeing. And perhaps we can look at the page before. I'd have to, I'd have to look at the, uh, I'd have to look at the pages. It might be that I, it wasn't written, you know, by me or, or I had input too. Um, I did a workbook, but it was in it, the workbook was that. Oh, I did that. My team did a workbook. That was the operation of the system. In other words, it showed um, screenshots that were, you know, if you press this, this came up. It was a very, um, very basic one. Um, and I don't recognize it as being training workbook eight at all. It, it, Might it have been that you produced one of the 10 or one or more of the 10 workbooks, but not these particular ones, workbook eight or workbook 10? I was never I was never aware it was part of a series. The one I did was really to uh, to support what was what was done in training. In other words, it was a um, a follow through book. In other words, if you press this, this screen comes up. If you want to do this, you press here, and it had all the icons um, of the uh, uh, from the system, um, which made it very easy to follow. It was a it was a real I don't know yeah simple book to follow. It wasn't uh, I don't remember it being part of a set of any of any workbooks. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. It's perhaps an issue that we can explore with other witnesses in this phase. I don't believe there are any other questions. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Fletcher, for giving your evidence to the inquiry. I'm very grateful. To you. <laughs> thank you. Right. Um, it's just one witness tomorrow, is it, um, Mr. Blake, or have I got that wrong? We we have just one witness. Yeah, fine. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bansell. That's it. Yeah, fine. I'm on track. Thank you very much. So, uh, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Thank you very much.